you take a glass a glass half filled with water okay and then you pour a little bit of oil the normal cooking oil that you use at your home uh, but uh, well be very sure and do it in the supervision of your mom so in her presence you should do this because if you are spilling things if you are breaking things i'm not responsible okay so what you need to do is you need to fill the water like this and then gently put a pencil inside what you're going to see is something of this sort what is going on did the pencil break or something what has happened why is it like this what is this phenomena well you see this phenomena every morning if you get up that early so when you see the sunrise the light from the sun is coming to the earth of course it's coming to you so you look at this sunlight and you open your window and you see the sun now if i might ask you the sun that you are looking at is it the actual position of the sun is it or even the stars the stars that you look at in the night sky are the stars actually there where you are seeing it well these are important questions to ask because these are the questions that will be answered by something that we are going to study next so to just tell you and give you some idea about or some hint about this phenomena of the sunrise so as you look at this sunlight well as it passes through then what happens what happens it bends the sunlight bends and as it bends what happens there is a shift in the position of the sun so when you look at the sun it's not the actual position of the sun that you are looking at it's actually the apparent position right it's where it is appearing to be it might not be there actually so that is what you see well if i might ask you a question what is this phenomena what phenomena are we talking about what is going on let me give you some more hint let's say you have a light bulb and you have a glass slab and you are going for a normal incidence where all these rays are falling normally onto the glass slab we know in this case that all this light will go undeviated it will just pass through but the moment you have an oblique projection of the light rays on this transparent medium then the light rays bend right the same situation with that of the earth and the sun all right so when light passes through a different medium and it's a transparent medium it bends of course it continues moving in a straight line path but it bends as you can see it should have gone like this but it bends okay now what is this phenomena called that's the question what is this phenomena called what is this phenomena well this phenomena is our next topic this is the next thing that we are going to discuss and not to mention again very very important for us and it is called as refraction so are you all excited to learn about refraction yes okay so now let's start off with refraction first of all the definition of refraction so what is this refraction of course you know it has to do something with the bending of light correct so the bending of light rays when it passes from one medium to another medium with different what optical density when a light ray passes from one medium to another medium having different optical density then this light rays they bend and this bending of the light ray or this entire phenomena is what we call as refraction okay let's understand certain terms just like we had seen certain terms in case of reflection we saw that there was something called as incident ray there was something called as normal there was something called as reflected ray over here also let's consider a glass slab and the ray which is coming towards the glass slab will be called as incident ray if you draw a perpendicular to the point of incidence this is called as the normal and once it passes through another medium it bends right 
So the angle that it makes with the normal is called as the angle of refraction and the ray which emerges is called as the refracted ray. All right. And you have got this angle of incidence, the same thing, right? The, the angle that the incident ray subtends with the normal is called as the angle of incidence. Now, originally the ray was supposed to move along this path, but it got deviated by this much angle. What is the value of that angle? Well, the angle of deviation is I minus I. We have discussed about all this deviation at great length when we were dealing with reflection. So there is no need to go back and study about the same thing again. So what is more important is this term of optical density because we know that the light is going to bend when it moves from one medium to another medium. Okay. The condition is that they should have different optical density. So the new term that we have now is optical density and we should understand what is optical density. What we have seen however is uh, something called as mass density and mass density is totally different from optical density. Don't be confused with mass density and optical density. They are totally two different things. So let's understand a little bit more about optical density. So what is optical density? Optical density is going to determine that what should be the value of velocity when light travels through it. Now, of course, at this point of time, since we are studying ray optics, we don't know that light is also a wave, right? So light is an electromagnetic wave. If you don't know till now, let me just give you an introduction to it. We have one full chapter called as wave optics, where we are going to see light as a wave, but light actually is an electromagnetic wave, just to give you some hints about it, okay? So, as light goes through different mediums, the velocity of light changes. The velocity of light is different in different mediums. All right. Now, if the velocity of the light is more in a certain medium, and if velocity of the light is less in another medium, then how do we understand this optical density? Well, that medium in which light is able to travel faster that medium will be a optically rarer medium. Clear? So a medium in which light is able to travel faster will be an optically rarer medium. And a medium in which light will be traveling a bit slower, maybe relatively slower, right? Will be what kind of a medium? An optically denser medium. So whether it is optically denser or optically rarer, will be determined by the velocity with which light travels in that particular medium. So it has to do something with the velocity of the light in that particular medium. Let's take some example to understand that. Let's say I have a glass slab, I have uh, another container having water, and then the third condition is that when I put one above the other. Now, of course, the light ray in the first case is coming from air. So as it comes, you can see there is a bending and the light slows down. The velocity of the light in glass is less, which means glass is a denser medium as compared to air, right? So glass is optically denser than air, clear? Now when it comes to water, once the light is coming from air, you can see that even in this case, the speed of light is less in water as compared to the speed of light in air. Which means that for this pair of medium, I can say that air is optically rarer because the speed of light is more and water is optically denser because the speed of light is less. Now, when we put one above the other, then what happens if the light is coming from the glass and is entering into water, then you see what happens. Well, in this case, the light, the light is traveling from an optically denser medium to an optically rarer medium. How do I determine all that? Because what I know is that the speed of light in glass, the speed of light in glass is less than the speed of light in water. So light travels faster in water than in glass. That is why when you are talking about these two mediums, that is glass and water, then which will become optically denser and which will become optically rarer? Come on, tell me, tell me the answer. 
Well, you can see that on the screen also. Well, glass will be an optically denser medium and water will be an optically rarer medium.